So I've been a software engineer for quite a while now, and I'll say one of the most useful tools that you can use when you're building out software is something called queues and topics. Topics are basically a way to allow your systems to be decoupled from each other, where you can publish a message to a topic and that topic will broadcast that message to various other listeners. So a good scenario where this could be used is for example, let's say we're building out a Pokemon card trading system. And when someone were to list a new rare Pokemon card, you need to send out an SMS message, you need to send out an email message, and maybe even need a way to hook up the Discord to message various channels when that rare Pokemon card is. So we're going to be trying to use a topic to demonstrate that example. And I will say before I dive into showing a high level overview, this video is sponsored by Upstash. And more specifically, we are going to be using their QStash service to set up a topic where we can kind of build out a system that's decoupled or when a Pokemon card is listed and the things that happen after that card gets listed. Okay, so for those watching, maybe you're newer at programming, you don't really understand like what, what is a queue? What is a, a topic? Let's give a quick overview of what a topic is and also kind of work this into the system that we're trying to build. So in our case, we have like a Pokemon trading API, right? And at some point, a user is going to come in and they are going to list a rare Pokemon card. Okay. This doesn't have to be Pokemon. This could be like baseball cards or whatever type of trading system you could think of. But the idea is that when this rare Pokemon card is ingested into the system, like when someone tries to put it for sale, let's say you want to send out events to various people using SMS. You want to send out various events to people using uh, email. You want to send out events using Discord notifications. But also, let's say you want to make it so whenever you want to add in a new type of consumer, you don't have to go and like redeploy a bunch of code, right? Let's say you just want to build like another system over here and you want this Pokemon trading API to just simply broadcast a new event to this new system over here without having to do a full code deploy. Okay. So instead of doing all the logic directly in the API, you can use something such as a topic where your API is going to send a message to a topic like this. And in this case, I'll say Q stash topic. And behind the scenes, what this topic does is basically anyone who's trying to listen on this topic or consume from this topic is going to get broadcast in an event whenever an event happens. So you could have multiple services out here. Like if you're big in the microservices, this is another good example of when like you potentially want to do this. These different things could be listening for this topic when the event comes in. And you could have these different services process the events. So I am going to show you a really basic overview with Next.js. I'm not actually going to send out emails or send out Discord notifications, but I want to give you the overall feel of like how you can implement a topic using the QStash service. And the way that we're going to do it in this example, all of these circles, this is still going to refer to the same API. So technically these are be calling, you know, different API endpoints on my original API. But QStash provides a bunch of built-in retry logic. So if for whatever reason you try to send out an SMS message and it fails, it's going to continuously retry that event up to a certain amount of times. And it kind of helps your system be more resilient, especially when you're trying to deal with things such as sending off uh, third-party requests to APIs. You want that automatic retry built in. And that is what we're going to try doing in this video. So I'm going to go to QStash and go to the quick start guide. And if you follow through this, they'll tell you how you can basically receive events. So there's two parts to this video I'm going to talk about. There's receiving events where you basically have to verify the event that came in. And then you also need a way to publish events. So let's start with the receiving side. So if we go back to the diagram here, we're going to build out API endpoints for all of these and kind of use the QStash library to kind of let this all happen. So I already have a next application set up. I'm going to go ahead and run npm install upstash slash qstash. All right, so next let's go ahead and make an API endpoint. So I believe their example is with the pages directory. So we can just do that, but I do believe they have examples with the app directory. So I'm going to go over here into the API and I will make a new one called, we're going to call ours SMSTS. And let's just go ahead and copy some of this example code. Okay, so I think, so let's keep on scrolling down. It looks like we do need to load in some things for the environment variables. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new .env file and also add in the next signing key. So those keys can be found right here. We see the signing keys. These are basically used to verify that the message that comes in is actually sent by someone who should be able to send the message, right? Because this is a public API. Anyone can just hit your API and we want to verify that the event that comes in is from who we think it should be. And, um, 
So let's go ahead and set those up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we can actually hit this endpoint. Now in order for Qstash to kind of like message you, they can't just message localhost 3000, right? So they actually have to hit a real endpoint. So this is why we're gonna commit this to a repo and get this deployed to Vercel. But overall, like you just need to have this deployed at some endpoints so that you can configure the topic and tell it what endpoints it needs to invoke when something happens. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just import the Qstash topic real quick. And I'll add in those two environment variables here, right here, but I'll cut this out so you guys can see them. And then go ahead and click deploy. All right, so while that's deploying, scroll down, it tells you how to set up your keys. It tells you how to redeploy using new environment variables. So this curl command will tell you how to actually like verify your endpoint using Qstash. Technically, I think I could just use this with locals right now if I wanted to. All right, so it looks like this API is done deploying. We can go ahead and copy that. I want to verify this actually works. Let's just go ahead and copy this code real quick. So as you can see in the URL, you hit qstash.upstash.io slash v1 slash publish. And then you can put in whatever endpoint that you want the event to go to. So in our case, we are going to put our endpoint, which is API slash SMS. And it looks like the bear token was already added to it. So let's just go ahead and run this command and see if we get a response back. Cool. So after running this, we do get back a message, which is what we should expect if everything is good. And if we went to the logs of Vercel, we'd see this. Okay, so this is just the setup for um, our, our SMS endpoint. But again, we wanted to pretend like we had different API endpoints and we wanted to set up a topic so that when a certain rare card is uploaded to our system, we can do all this stuff at once. So going back over to Qstash, let's go to topics here and I'm gonna create a new topic and I'm gonna call this rare cards. Go ahead and click create. But now we have a topic which we can actually start adding URL endpoints to. So for example, let's add in that API SMS endpoint. Go ahead and click add. And now what this is allowing us to do is we have a topic that we can send an event to and that event is going to be broadcasted to whatever API endpoints that you were to add in here, right? So let's just go ahead and add a couple more. Let's just pretend we have one for S, um, pretend like we have one for emails. Let's also pretend like we have one for Discord, okay? Now, as you can see, the decoupling that I talked about earlier is all right here. Now you can do this automatically via the API, like you can add and remove endpoints using the Ustash API. I'm just doing this manually, just a demo. But basically what you can do is if you have other parts of your system, which like, for example, you're using microservices and you need to just add in a new endpoint and have that event be broadcasted to a new API endpoint to be processed to do some separate logic, you can simply just come in here and add the URL, right? Simple enough. So how do we actually invoke this topic and have it send off messages to all those endpoints? And secondly, we should probably create endpoints for email and Discord. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna call it email. And I'm also going to copy this and call it Discord. Right now, I'm just going to keep it the same code, but imagine you have different APIs or different systems that need to be able to process this same message. I'm going to push this so it will redeploy out to Vercel. All right, now scrolling down to the very bottom, let's look at how do you publish a message to a queue, okay? So using their UI, you can publish a message or you can use curl or, you know, you can use fetch or Axios, however you want. You basically just have to format the message like this, include your API token inside the authorization header. And if you read through the docs, basically it takes whatever message that you send in and basically broadcasts it to every endpoint that you have set up in that array. So let's just go ahead and verify this works. I'm going to go back to details here and you can use the request builder to actually test publishing out to this topic. So let's refresh the page and you see here we have the rare cards topic. I can go ahead and put a body like hello world. I want it to be a one-time event, but you can actually schedule stuff with cron jobs if you want this to kind of reoccur. And like, for example, every morning you want it to hit X amount of endpoints or send out messages to a topic, you can do that. I'm gonna say once, and I'm gonna go ahead and just send it right off. So if everything is set up correctly, we should see at least three logs pop up in our Vercel logs here. So now we send a message to our topic, and you can go to the logs here, and you'll see that it's actually trying to invoke the SMS endpoint, it's invoking that Discord endpoint, it's also invoking the email endpoint. So as you can see here, I think I actually added the wrong URL here because as you redeploy to Vercel, you're going to get new URLs. So you can see that Upstash is actually retrying over and over again, I think up to three times to try to get that message delivered. And it failed after those three retries. 
which you can actually customize, right? So if you go here, you can actually change how many retries do you want this event to use if for some reason the API is down or there's an issue. But in our case, I think it defaults to like two or three. So that's why we're only seeing this. So let's try to fix this. First thing I need to do is I'm going to go back to my topic and I'm going to remove these incorrect URLs. So let's figure out what the actual URL should be. And it should be this one. So let's go back here. I'm going to delete all of these. So let's just go ahead and add that endpoint. I'll say API slash SMS. And I'll add one for email. And then I'll also add one for Discord. All right, let's try it one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and do another request to the rare cards topic. I'll say hello world again. And we will just go ahead and click send here. And let's go to the logs and let's verify these things get delivered. So now they all got sent successfully. And if I go to my logs on Vercel, you can see that all those logs were actually printed out here because our endpoints were hit with the Discord endpoint, the SMS endpoint, and the email endpoint. So that is the overview of how you can use QStash to basically set up a decoupled system by using topics. So even if you don't want to use a topic, you can actually use QStash to send off events and messages to endpoints and it will do that retry logic for you without having to set up a topic or something like that. So if you ever need to like try to invoke an API endpoint and just have it continuous to retry, or you want to set up a cron job and have it do and have it do like a request X amount of times a day, you can do that using QStash. So that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. Be sure to go check out the QStash product on upstash.com if you ever wanted an easy way to set up a topic where you can broadcast events to multiple API endpoints. Super simple to set up especially if you're using any of these frameworks that they provide in their quick start guide. Cool. Well, have a good day. Happy coding. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to find a place to talk to some other developers or just hang out or message me directly. And like always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon, and stay tuned for future videos.